Hi guys, and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Besides the mess that's over here, and that is because I kind of took the heater out and um, adjusted the temperature, so I moved everything so there's all this debris floating around. I'm going to give you an update on my fry and talk about a very common issue that happens with betta fish fry, and that is called swim bladder disorder. And what that is, is when baby bettas eat food, if they are overfed, or if they eat too much brine shrimp, their tummies get really, really big and they push on this organ called the swim bladder. Now, the swim bladder is what controls uh, if the fish is upright and how they swim up and down, and it helps with their buoyancy. And when there is a lot of food and the stomach is full, then what happens is it presses on the swim bladder and the swim bladder, as it's developing in a baby fish, doesn't develop properly. And what this does is creates fish that kind of swim in a weird way like this guy right here. They kind of swim upright and they're, they're positioned vertically instead of horizontally. This guy is doing it too and they struggle with swimming and it, it kind of can become a very common problem especially in betta fry. So what happened for me is I've been feeding my babies uh, baby brime shrimp twice a day and in the morning and then uh, an hour before going to sleep and during the day they get uh, rapashi gel food to munch on as their other uh, substitute. So I had no issues until Monday where I got a little brave and I fed them an extra meal of baby brime shrimp in the middle of the day and this caused their tummies to get really really puffed up because they still had some food left over from the morning meal and then the next day I have a couple babies that developed swim bladder disorder. Now from what I have kind of learned by watching um, some other YouTubers that are better breeders, um, one of them would be Inglorious Bettas on YouTube, is that there's two types of fish that have swim bladder disorders. Some that kind of swim, you know, at, at an angle, and then some that really have a hard time even getting off the surface and they just kind of drag and stay on the bottom, like some of these guys over here. Well, let me focus. So I'm still learning about this myself. But I wanted to make a video to kind of show you guys how this looks like, how this can be a problem, and so you guys can pr try to prevent it. So one of the ways you can try to prevent this from happening is don't overfeed your fish. It's very tempting to feed your baby bettas as much as they can fit in their tummy, but um, this will definitely negatively affect them. So you want to feed them a good amount, but don't overdo it. Now, if they do start to develop swim bladder issues, some of the things that I've found online that say will help with this problem would be one, raise the temperature in your water a little bit. So my temperature for this tank uh, usually stays around 80 to 81 degrees, but I just took the um, heater out and adjusted it. And it's already going up, it's at 82. I'm gonna have this at about 83 to 84 degrees. And what this will do is the temperature in your water uh, affects the metabolism and the digestion rate in your fish because fish are cold-blooded animals, so the temperature uh, the, of the surroundings they're in affects their bodies. What this will do is they will start to metabolize and digest the baby brine shrimp a little faster, and that means it'll spend less time inside their body. This also might mean that they might become a little hungrier but they will have the rapashi gel food to kind of munch on, which I'll put some right here. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, the other thing would be fasting your fish and also feeding them less. So if you do have some, a lot of babies that are having issues, it is good not to feed them for a day or even two sometimes, depending how old your fry is. For me, I didn't feed my babies for a day. And then the next day, I only fed them some flake food and rapashi gel food. And then today is the third day, 
and they finally got a little bit of brine shrimp again in the morning but they're gonna get very little brine shrimp and I'm gonna fo mostly focus on my gel food and some flake food for them so that those are the couple things that I found online that you can do uh, I also heard that feeding frozen Daphnia to babies will also uh, help them out because it Daphnia kind of will clear their system and it's, it's very easy for them to pass I didn't have time to go to the store yet to get any, but I think I will. Just so I can also uh, vary their diet a little bit, so they're not only eating two to three things. I want to feed them as much as possible, and the biggest variety that I can. And that's pretty much, so far, all I know. I know that if you have swim bladder problems with older fish, you can give them green peas to kind of help clear them up if they're constipated. But with baby bettas, that is so far what I figured out. And I wanted to make a video addressing this. So if you are breeding, uh, I definitely encourage you to look up more about swim bladder disorder and learn more. I still need to look, research a bit more. I'm probably going to do that on the computer and see what I can find. So far, I just know the basic information. I did find that if you catch swim bladder disorder very early with baby bettas, if you start to be proactive and uh, start to do things that will reduce it or that will help deal with it, such as raising the temperature, feeding less, and feeding different types of food, there is a chance that because their swim bladder is still developing, that uh, they can actually develop and be able to swim properly again. So that is the hope that I'm, I'm hoping with these babies. If I do have a few that don't um, get any better over the next couple of weeks and they can't swim, I do have to look into options of possibly uh, culling those particular ones, just like you would with also any fry that have uh, any abnormal abnormalities or they don't form uh, properly. I will probably feed them to my African cichlids that are hanging out down there, which in my opinion would be the hu most humane way um, to kind of end their life because they would just get eaten really fast. And that they're also they don't go to waste because my cichlids would definitely benefit from some live food. I know to some of you guys that might sound really horrible. But we already feed a lot of live foods to our fish anyways. For example, my baby brime shrimp that I'm actually culturing some more. Not culturing, what am I saying? I'm hatching. There's some right here. They're live little um, organisms that I'm feeding to my baby bettas. And the frozen blood worms were live at one point. So, you know, it's part of the food chain, guys. And I would prefer... If a fish really couldn't swim properly um, to end that fish's life at a very young age, then to let that fish struggle and not have a good quality of life. So that you know, that's something you have to t think about, especially if you become a breeder. Um, you will, other than you know, losing a couple fish from natural death, uh, you will have to probably call. A few of your fish which culling can be it can mean a lot of things this doesn't necessarily mean killing um, it could also mean that you set aside some fish for pet homes pet only homes it can mean that you feed them to your other fish it means you can also use clove oil or something else to humanely euthanize them it could be a variety of things but when you have in my case I have about 20 to 30 so it's not that bad but if you have a hundred or two hundred fry you can't really take care of the ones that have physical um, disabilities or deformities and you know you can't really sell them to other people either because if people uh, if, if they have any problems and people try to breed them they will pass on these problems to other fish or the fish will just not have a good quality of life because of the issues in this case, you know, if a fish can't swim and it's struggling its entire life, you have to really think about, is this fish going to have a good life? So, I figured I will talk to you guys about this topic, kind of bring it up, especially I know I inspired a couple of you guys to want to breed betta fish, 
So this is something you should be kind of aware of, research it, and um, you could take preventative measures to try to prevent. Now, even if you do your best to prevent it and feed, you know, less, feed a variety of foods, do some of the things I've mentioned, you still might get one or two uh, baby bettas with swim bladder disorder. And, you know, it could be genetic. It could be for a variety of reasons. Or maybe your particular baby just was really greedy and overfed itself and just ate too much. So, it's not something you should uh, beat yourself beat yourself up over or, you know, worry too much. It just it happens in the hobby. But if you take preventative measures, you can try to prevent this from happening to all your babies. For me, it happened to a couple. If I continued... To, if I thought that was how they were supposed to swim normally and I continued to feed them a lot, probably today when I'm filming the video, all of them would be having this problem. Luckily, only about one third of my babies got it, so at least that's, that's a positive in my opinion. So I hope that you um, enjoyed this information. I will try to see if I can find some stuff online. I've been having a hard time finding information in regards to fry online so we'll see how that quest goes there's a lot of um, articles on uh, swim bladder disorder and adult fish but that's definitely something you should look into and try your best to prevent so that all your babies have a chance to develop properly so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative and would like to see more videos like this if you are new and stumbled upon this channel, be sure to subscribe and check out all my other pet care videos. I have over 100 videos about fish, cats, dogs, and other critters. And if you have some friends who are interested in baby bettas, breeding, or just own a betta and would like to see how they look as babies, definitely you know, let them know about this channel and also check out my breeding better fish breeding playlist so that's it guys hope you have an awesome day bye